For our final seminar tonight, before we have the question and answer sessions, um, and please do uh, send in your questions through the WhatsApp number that comes up on the screen during the um, teaching. The topic is developing a successful career. Developing a successful career. And this will be handled by Dr. Adeinka Okuoga. He's a director, board of directors in the United Nations Federal Credit Union in New York, USA. Adeinka Okuoga currently serves as a director on the board of directors of the UNFCU. Prior to this time, he had extensive international civil service career as senior official of UN International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, UN International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, UNICTR, and the World Bank Headquarter. He worked in various capacities as a chartered surveyor and senior lecturer at the University of Brighton in the United Kingdom. His international career has taken him to serve globally in Croatia, Georgia, Kuwait, Austria, Tanzania, and Washington, D.C., USA. Dr. Kuoga earned an MBA in international management from Royal Holloway University of London. He received a PhD in construction economics and a master of science degree in architecture from Bartlett School, University College, London. A graduate of World Bank Executive Leadership Program. Professionally, he is a fellow of the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors and served on the board of directors of RICS USA from 2015 to 2019. Mr. Koga is a member of Faith Miracle Church since 2010. He's happily married and blessed with four adult children. Please, with Jesus' joy, let's welcome to take us on the next seminar, Dr. Adeinka Okuoga. to so much from Sister Ife and the young Matthew. And I could see from what we have heard from young Matthew that um, the only place where success comes before work is actually in the dictionary. <laughs> Apart from there, work comes first before success. Yes, that's what I can see. Praise the Lord. I want to thank... Uh, uh, Father and the Lord, Pastor Moses, for putting this together and for organizing this. It is indeed something that um, I found quite surprising and interesting, the way he has been supporting our members, and um, not only interested in our spiritual growth, but Sorry. our well-being. Please try again. What? <laughs> this is you know, this is problem with technology. Okay, um, so this is something that he has been doing consistently. I've had him encouraging members of the church to have their own property to start their own business. This is quite unique, and I thank God for that. And thank you very much, Pastor Moses, for doing that for us. Um, Listening to Sister Ife as well as young Matthew, I've decided to modify my intervention slightly so that I don't have to repeat what they have all said. Um, you see, rather than going into career, international career, which I went through uh, over a period of some 25, 30 years, 
I felt I should address some fundamental foundation because you cannot build something on nothing. Anyone can find out how to apply for international job. The instructions are there. I'm not going to waste time on that. But there is foundation that you, we need to build and cultivate. And this is very, very important. And I will quickly see how best I can go through this. The first one I would like to see is about the fundamentals of success. We have to be successful in our individual self first. Before you can be successful in international career or in any area of human endeavor, you need to be able to manage self. First thing I will mention is about our personal relationship with God. Without God, we are nothing. It is only God that can reveal things to us. In the book of Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says all secret things belong to God. These are things that ordinarily we might not be able to see. God can reveal it for us. And we need to walk on the right path, the path that is our own path. You cannot run on somebody else's track. But it has to be that of yours. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God sees the end from the beginning. At times we do pray. And we think our prayers are not answered. But in fact, God answered our prayers. But in a different way. And what I have found out is. At times when a door is shut. God has already opened one for us. The only thing is that we spent a lot of time standing by the door that is already shut. We didn't look back to see the one he has opened for us. When we walk with God, God will speak to us. And God will reveal things to us. We have to have prayer deposits with God so that we can tap on it. It is not when we have challenges that we start looking for prayer contractors, like my, my friend's wife will say, pray for me, pray for me. You need to have a personal relationship with God yourself. Um, I had a discussion in the, in the church some time ago, and we discussed about time management. And when I was reflecting back, I looked at the whole message about God. God who is finisher, God, finisher's grace. The finisher's grace by God. I think Pastor Moses preached this on Sunday the 23rd of February 2014. Next month it will be nine years. <laughs> the finisher's grace is something which only God will give you. A lot of people start things they will never finish. They abandon. I can say myself, I abandoned my PhD midway at one time. I just, you know, to do something in a sustained way for three, four years, it takes a lot of strength. And the supervisor called me and said, look, gentlemen, we have done a lot. We don't want to do abortive work. Let's finish this thing. Praise the Lord. The time management thing is something that everyone needs to know. And we run through this quickly. A life is made up of time. And a wasted time is a wasted life. We need to really be sure that we manage our time very well. These are fundamental things. Before you start going into a career, these are things that we need to take control of. Otherwise, you have nowhere going. International job, international careers are extremely, extremely competitive. We are talking of people applying for 200, 200 countries. So you really need to be very strong, well qualified. So these are things that you need to, first of all, reinforce yourself. The foundation determines the number of flaws you can build on top of it. Yeah. 
We talk of tough time management. Everyone is entitled to only 24 hours. Even the king, the queen, everyone. It's only to, it's, it's, God is very impartial in that respect. Yeah. So you have to manage that. There's something we call priority and selectivity. Uh, the World Bank, for example, don't just go into a country and get involved in everything. No, 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 no. They don't want to come into your country and run your country. They have to select where they have comparative advantage and where they can make maximum impact. The same thing applies to us. We really need to prioritize and know what is important for us. Um, there's another aspect which is called the discipline in all its ramifications. Before you can make any progress, you see, you can be disciplined and not be successful. But you cannot be successful without being disciplined. No way, it, can, it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it, it, the Chinese have a saying. They say, great is the man who conquer others, but greater is he who conquer himself. You have to really overcome a lot of challenges, a lot of bad habits. Not, I myself am not perfect. We have our weaknesses. There are things that we have to overcome in order to be able to have this strong foundation to be able to develop a good career. The Boy Scout motto which says, be prepared, is just not for nothing. You have to really prepare and prepare very well. You heard that from young Matthew just now. Uh, in preparing for career, something that is extremely important, which I want people to note, is about health is wealth. From my experience as a manager and a chief of service in the UN at a point, I've seen people that have difficulty in their careers. Uh, maybe due to health challenges, there's a limit to what the organization can do. So for you to be able to be steady and progress, you need to make sure you take good care of your health. Um, there's a difference. Please listen a little carefully here. There's a difference between lifespan and health span. We need to understand that a little bit. The health span is when one is active, you can enjoy things, and lifespan may be longer. But it's always advisable that the two are very close to each other. Some people will say they have no problem to exercise, they have no problem to keep fit. The, prob the issue is, even if you have all the wealth in this world, you still need health to enjoy it. You need health to progress. You need uh, health is so fundamental that we have to pay attention to it. If there is health issue, every other thing becomes secondary. They become irrelevant. Regular checkups and everything, even Lazarus, he still died. I'm not saying because you look after all your health, you will never die. But the thing is, it is important that we are fit and able to have the regular thing. Another aspect which I found out from my experience, which is fundamental, is the question of worries. People get distracted by concern, by worries, and at times we have to try to counsel them. Worries is something that is like um, a rocking chair. It keeps you busy, but takes you nowhere. It distracts people a lot. They are not able to focus on their career. They are not able to make progress. They, do, they, they submit reports. You see so many mistakes. And this kind of people, you just don't renew their contract. And uh, so these are things, worries is something that people need to get behind them. And one of the things which will help, and from what I have found out, is you have to differentiate between a problem and a predicament. There are, are two different things. For problem, you can do something about it. But for predicament, you have to live with it you have to <laughs> just manage it. Um, 
I can give one or two examples. If it's a problem, um, you need to, you're hungry, you can go and eat, it's not a problem, it's, it's solved. But there's some predicament, maybe it's a medical thing, uh, which you have to use your drug regularly, you just have to approach. But if you approach a predicament with the mindset of a problem, you'll be frustrated. And if you approach a problem with the mindset of a predicament, you'll be frustrated as well. So we need to understand all these are little, little things that are constitute foundation for which it gives someone stability, emotional stability, to be able to pursue and follow up a successful career. Uh, I'm running very quick. There is another one. It's, called, it's the issue of character. People, some people say, oh, they didn't renew my contract. They didn't like me. It's because I'm this, it's that. Not really. If you look carefully at times, there are character deficits. This person is coming late to work. This person is not having good relationship with other colleagues. This person is not doing a good job. So there's such much, you see, seeking spiritual solution for character deficit is a waste of time. Uh, the enemy is actually at times with some of us. And this character thing is extremely important for career and for career progress. What takes you into a job may not necessarily be the same thing that will keep you there. It may not necessarily also be the same thing that will make you to get promotion there. Yeah. They are all different grades and different levels. Uh, from my experience around the world, there are cultural things which you have to, your antenna must be up so that you can understand where that person is talking from perspective. Where is it coming from? Um, treat people with courtesy because in any career it is people noted. Never look down on anyone. God can make a change in your story by using anyone at any time. Uh, the CEO of the CEO of Porsche once said that you should hire character and train for skills. Those are the fundamental. I will quickly now go into those things for career. I will start by talking about there is need to be enterprising. The same quality that you need in this respect for career, employ, uh, uh, employment career, is the same thing that you need for your own business. You have to make use of many priceless opportunities that wait to be discovered. I give a good example of my son's friend who started a business in Nigeria, Lagos. If anyone knows Lagos, you know what that, the traffic issue is a big thing. Most of these young people, they cannot afford to rent a whole flat on their own. Most of these young people cannot pay three years rent advance that the landlords are asking for. But this young man started this business. He was taking properties and renting it room by room for young people in Victoria Island and Ikoyi and Lekki, all those areas. He will take a whole house, bring in three young people. He got a roster of them. You know, these people are very, <laughs> they, are, they are digital native, <laughs> not some of us that are digital immigrants. <laughs> Within a very short time, he got a list of something close to 7,000. Most of these young people, they don't want to live very far away with their parents. They want to come and live in Victoria Island. And they can't afford a big house on their own. So he was renting this house to them. Um, 7,000, and he was making a huge business. So this is an opportunity, a niche area, which he found out and discovered. It's all about also making opportunity, display initiative. Problem solving is discover the problem and creatively 
look for solution for it. Why do you need to be enterprising? Your company might be downsizing, restructuring, how sourcing what you are doing. A number of high street banks are closing down. Some shops are closing down. You need to, be, to think ahead that where is my career going from here? Um, my late cousin once advised, he said, Yinka, before you are 45, translate yourself from employee to employer, if you can do it. Because <laughs> further beyond that step, it becomes more difficult. Um, always ask yourself, anytime, if this job were not there, what would I do? That question, you may not be able to answer it today. You may not be able to answer it this week. You may not be able to answer it next month or next year. But you should keep asking that question. That this job I'm doing, if it maybe you are not the owner of the job. Somebody that is indispensable today can become expendable tomorrow. Uh, when we were in Vienna, I want to illustrate with us. When I got the job, I uh, was in the United Nations uh, in Vienna, Austria. The family, we all moved from England to Austria. And after some time, I was asking, if this job were not there, four kids in private school, if this job were not there, we are finished. And then we thought about it, we said, called my wife, said, look, we need to do something. Come back and we set up pharmacy in the UK. So they're just a backup. We ended up having two pharmacies. She then sold the pharmacies. It was tough, it was not easy. But this is something that one has to think ahead and be creative. And thank God, <laughs> the job was there for a very longer time. Praise the Lord. Some enterprising attributes that we need to cultivate for success. Sixta Ife and uh, young Matthew mentioned a number of them. You need to be bold, confident, determined, persistent, be creative, be innovative, inquisitive, and show enthusiasm. Be energetic, be ambitious. I don't blame people when they say some people are ambitious. It's not a crime. It's quite a, it's a perfect, legitimate aspiration to be ambitious. It's not a, be adaptable. Next, I want to talk about the work. You have to work from the heart. That is, and what that means is that you have to look at your interests, the skills. This is exactly some of the things that Sister Ifi has talked about, and also analyze the specific area. Uh, in the international uh, realm of business, not only in the United Nations sphere now, which I came from, we have other international conglomerates. We are talking of Shell, we are talking of ExxonMobil, we are talking of Goldman Sachs, and all big companies, Coca-Cola, which are global. To make career in some of these areas, you really need to be organized, be top notch and be well qualified. And also make up your mind of all these different areas, where do I want to go? Where do I have the most comparative advantage over many others? One of the things you also need to be is the question of being prepared. Um, God uses those who are prepared. Uh, I will again fall back on my own. Some of the jobs which I will apply at times for, maybe they only need first degree or second degree. By the time you are applying with three, four degrees, at the very least, they said, this man, we better at least, we have to speak to him, even if we don't like him. 
you have to interview him, you have to speak to him because he's obviously almost overqualified for this. So you really have to put yourself in such a position that uh, you are very qualified to be interviewed. You need to love change. The world these days is extremely dynamic. Things are changing at the speed that we never imagined. So for you to get into international realm for career, you need to love change. You see, nature abhors stagnation. If you have a pot of flower and left it here, a plant here, if you wet it, keep wetting it, it will grow. If you stop wetting it, it's not going to be stagnant. It will die. There's nothing in between. It's not that you stop wetting the plant and the plant will stay like that. No, it's going to die. So in nature, stagnation is not something that nature supports. So we have to keep reinventing ourselves. Uh, and we have to be learning constantly. A lifelong learner. This is the other thing I want to mention here. In every area of human endeavor, knowledge doubles almost every five years. You don't want to be typewriter in the age of computer. Things change rather very quickly. And at the end, I will show a, a few slides which are showing some of the materials that I have that I occupy myself in trying to read to broaden my knowledge. You need to evaluate your skills and equip yourself. These days, there are a lot of free online uh, courses that you don't need to even pay for, and you can get certified. Um, when I was speaking to my son, um, he just went back to Harvard last uh, three days ago, that their university, big university like that, they didn't even bother. They put out a number of courses. You can just register online and do them free. So that is something that um, people need to know about and avail themselves the other opportunity. Interpersonal skills, manage your own motivation. It is not somebody's responsibility <laughs> to motivate you. It has to be from inside you. Um, also, get the big picture. In architecture, we have one saying. Anything that is built is built twice. First, in the mind, the architect will conceive it. He has seen it then before you design it and it is built. So you yourself need to have in mind what, what is your ultimate goal. And believe me, in most cases, people do achieve it if you set your mind on it. Create smart goals, which means specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Um, and let me finally come to something to avoid. We really need to avoid procrastination. You know, uh, young Matthew also mentioned that. Uh, it is a very slippery slope that you can just keep procrastinating. You will do tomorrow, you do after. In summary, there are four quotients. Four quotients. Intelligent quotient, which is a measure of learning ability for which people like young Matthew have. Ability to solve problems, memorize things, record things. There is the emotional quotient. This has to do with ability to maintain peace with others. You need this any place of work. What people measure mostly is intelligent quotient. They don't look at the other ones very critically. But in a place of work and in building your career, 
these are extremely important. Emotional, uh, emotional quotient asks also to do with being honest, being responsible, respect boundaries of other people, be humble. Um, <laughs> I could see that I was introduced as Dr. Adeyinka Okuoga. I never put doctor in front of my name. I worked in World Bank where 35% of the staff are PhD older. No matter how good someone is, there is always somebody better than you. We have 35% of staff that hold PhD. So what's the point in you putting doctor in front of your name. You better be careful. <laughs> Maybe somebody who was your lecturer is also within the area. Uh, so what am I saying? Be humble, be genuine, be considerate. The social quotient, ability to build a network of friends. This is also very important. Once a job opens up, I do get calls. People will call you and say, oh, are you available? This job is opened up, and that is that. And finally, adversity quotient. Ability to go through difficult time uh, without losing your mind. It is this is something that no college, no university will teach you this. Adversity will always come. It is part of human nature. But we, God will see us through it. Can we just show quickly those lists of uh, the items that I want to display? Where's the IT person? Oh, OK, that's OK. Now, I'm just showing you some of the items that I read. And some of them are available if anyone wants to uh, borrow it, I can make them available. This is one um, about sleep. Um, there's another next one. This is about healthier you. Uh, next one. Um, the power of habits. Uh, some people have bad habits. They need to replace them with good ones. So these are some things that at my leisure time, I try to read them. This is part of lifelong learning which is very important. Next, uh, the fitness formula. We really need to look at how best we can be fit, even when you travel, when you are traveling, when you are working, when you have a very limited space. Next, the exercise science. These are things that I, I don't, I, <coughs> Let's put it this way. I, I don't really watch a lot of films, and uh, I don't know about all this Nollywood much, but I take time to read nonfiction. Okay, next. Your brain. Uh, I try to read to find out, to learn new things. I'm not a neurologist, but I learn little, little things like this. Next. Um, the Bible, why it matters. This is something also that I found very contemporary, which I also read from US. Next. Okay, this is Secrets of Happiness. These are some things that it's, you see how people analyze it and explain it uh, uh, in a very layman way to understand. Next. Brain power, next. Successful work habits is also very important. This is something that I read some time ago. How, what are the habits that will make you successful in your career, in your work endeavor? Next. Yes, God and government. Uh, it, yes, this is very important and interesting. The reason why I went for this particular book I was wondering whether it's quite possible for somebody to be in politics and be godly. I, I, I struggle to see that a lot of uh, politicians, and there's a lot of corruption in the system. So I went and looked for this book called God and Government to try to find out whether an honest person can actually be a politician. 
But of course, this book did not really explain that to me. All this book was saying about the separation of state and government, which was not too helpful. But these are just some of the things I have been reading. And thank you very much, Pastor, for the opportunity of this. Praise the Lord.